Welcome to the Moto Z Droid full review. So let's kick this off talking about the design and build of the Moto Z here. So picking up the device, you have something which is like an always on display, except when you wave your hand across the sensors or pick the device up off a desk, it'll show you your notifications and the time. Take a look at the right hand side, you got your volume rockers and you have your textured power button as well. Now for me, I feel the volume rockers are placed way too high on the device and I think they would have been placed better right beneath the power button. Taking a look around the bottom of the device, you got a USB Type-C charging port, which does provide turbo charging. No headphone jack, by the way. Nothing on the left-hand side. And up on top, you have your noise cancellation mic, an antenna line, as you can see in the middle there, and then access to your micro SD card and your SIM card. And taking a look at the back of the device, you have your 13 megapixel camera. Now this does have optical image stabilization, laser autofocus, and this wood grain back, as you can see there, is actually removable. This is included with the Moto Z, and this is part of their shells that they include with the purchase. So you can buy actually uh, different styles for around $15. And taking a look back of this device, you'll notice how large of a camera hump this device has. And then you get the Motorola branding on the back of the device as well. And take a look at how thin this device is. Now this is supposedly the world's thinnest premium smartphone. And this is also made from military aircraft grade aluminum and stainless steel. And as you can see from the bottom there, those are gonna be the connectors for your Moto Mod which I'll do a separate review on the different ones that are being offered. Now this device also has a 2600 milliamp battery as well. So let's go ahead and take a look at the front of the Moto Z here. So you got a 5.5 inch Quad HD Super AMOLED display. Now with this display here, you also get water repellent coating on it. So it's an uh, advanced water repellent coating to protect against spills, splashes, and light rain. You do got these sensors on the bottom there. Moto branding, print sensor as well, which is actually very fast. Five megapixel front facing camera with flash as well. All right, so let's just go ahead and navigate around the home screen here. And the first thing I'll show you is you got your Google folder here. So you got your pre-installed Gmail, Maps, YouTube. So you got those which are standard. This weather widget on top, which I really like to use. And if you press on it, it does expand and give you some more information. You can actually customize this with different accent colors uh, to your choosing there. So that's a pretty nice looking uh, weather widget. I like the way it looks and it's pretty uh, customizable as you can see there and exit out of there. And another thing is when you hold down on the home screen there, you get wallpapers, widgets and settings. I'll go ahead and just show you some of the pre-installed wallpapers that are on the Moto Z here. And then of course, widgets and settings are there as well. Uh, let's go into the app drawer here. Now with this device, you almost get a near stock Android experience, except for all the pre-installed Verizon bloatware and games that is on the Moto Z Droid. So if you get this from Verizon, expect a whole lot of bloatware on this device. Now you also have a way up on top to search for certain applications just by typing it in. And in your keyboard, it's actually very customizable and you get the Google search uh, within the Google keyboard. So that's really neat. I like that. Um, for the most part, this device is pretty snappy. It does have the Snapdragon 820 processor, has four gigabytes of RAM on this device. So it's definitely very, very snappy. Pulling down the status bar there, as you can see, it does have that accordion effect there. And you can also edit all these uh, quick toggles that you have there. So this device is also rocking uh, Android 7.0 Nougat, so that's excellent. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and jump into settings here, and I'll show you a little bit more uh, options you have here in settings. This says mobile hotspot and tethering. Um, going to display. So this also has a color mode option here. So you can have standard, which is going to be a more realistic color, or you can choose vibrant, which is a more enhanced color saturation. Again, this has a quad HD AMOLED display. So the the display looks absolutely gorgeous. Now you also get another option here, uh, double pressing the power button will give you quick launch to your camera. So that's another option that you can have enabled there, uh, pressing the power button twice. And then you also get this option here, which is giving you the option to adjust the display size. So this is actually something new um, on Android 7.0 Nougat, but you can actually adjust the display size to larger or you can put it smaller. It's gonna give you more information on your display.
Now moving on to storage, you get 32 gigabytes of onboard memory on this device, micro SD card expansion, so that's excellent. You also get a option for smart lock. So basically the device will stay on if it's on your, if it detects it's on your body, trusted places, trusted devices, uh, face recognition, and it also recognizes your voice. So that's pretty neat. Now you also, like I mentioned, get Android 7.0 Nougat. So this device is optimized very well and battery life, I've been getting around four, four and a half hours of screen on time. Now let's move on to the camera here. This device has a 13 megapixel camera, optical image stabilization, laser autofocus. You get this other feature, which is just a twist of the wrist, launches your camera. Now the camera is great on this device. I mean, it's such a joy using this camera. One of the best I've used. Um, go ahead and kind of walk you through how it looks here and some of the features you get. So up on the corner there, you do get timer, you know, three seconds, 10 seconds. Then you get access to your flash and as well as HDR sliding out, gets you access to your settings so you can control the shutter sound there. Uh, the quick capture, like I showed you, just a flip of the wrist, launches the camera. Um, you can actually save the location of where you're taking your photos. You can also change the photo size. So if you want it to be a uh, lower megapixel than the 13, you can change that as well. You got a shutter type option there. Either you can tap anywhere on the display or you can use the actual shutter button as well. Now this records in 4K at 30 frames per second, full HD, full HD at 60 frames per second, 720p at 30 frames per second, and all the way down to 480. But the video, is great on this. I mean, I've been using this camera for a little over a week now, and it's, gosh, one of the best cameras I've used. Uh, you got some other options there if you click up, which will take you into a time-lapse mode, slow motion, uh, panorama mode as well. This device also has manual controls on this, so that's excellent. You can control the white balance, the ISO, the focus, uh, it just works really well. I've been using this device to take a lot of photos, a lot of videos, and the manual controls work really well. To get quick access to the photos you've taken, just slide out and then you'll be able to preview all the photos you've just taken there. Uh, the photos come out looking good, a little oversaturated, but I kind of like that look. Um, you also get a five megapixel front facing camera with flash, which actually looks really nice as well. So those are kind of the photos I've taken there. Now you also get another option here, which is this chop action, which is gonna give you access to your flashlight and just doing the chop action again, turns the flashlight off. If you're into watching movies, YouTube videos, the Moto Z display will not disappoint. It has a beautiful 5.5 inch quad HD AMOLED display and the picture just looks beautiful. Now you also get a front firing single speaker up on top and it's pretty loud. It's not the loudest, but it's actually above average sound, I would say, for a fun firing single speaker, which is nice. It's better than it being on the back or on the bottom. So at least the volume, the sound is coming directly at you. 1440 resolution. Um, this video here is only 1080p, 60 frames per second you're seeing, but you can actually go all the way up to 1440 resolution on YouTube videos. So again, audio sounds good. It's above average. Display looks beautiful, amazing. You're gonna have no issues watching YouTube videos or movies. Now this device is also great for multitasking. Um, you get that dual window mode there, as you can see, so you can have two applications running at the same time. So multitasking is actually great on this device. Opening and closing applications, I really had no hiccups or stutters with this device. Now this, de now this device also has the Qualcomm Snapdragon 820, the Adreno 530, four gigabytes of RAM, a pixel count of 537, a Geekbench 4 scores this 1,638 single core score and 4,000 multi-core score. So those are pretty good numbers. Now let's move on to gameplay on the Moto Z. So I've actually tried to push this device pretty hard. I played a lot of games off the Google Play Store and just trying to see how well that this device can perform. Well, when it came to a game like this, Asphalt 8, it actually ran very, very smooth. I didn't suffer any type of drops in frames, any lag, any hiccups and I especially did not suffer from any overheating issues. So that is one of the key things, key elements I look for while playing these games is, am I getting overheating issues? And there was absolutely none with the Moto Z. Um, the one thing that I will say is you're gonna see a significant drop in your battery 
when you do start playing these really high intense games. Again, this device only has a 2600 milliamp battery, so it's not very large, but you do have turbocharging to go along with it. So before I end the full review, I just want to mention that this device is very thin, lightweight, and it performs excellent. But this device picks up fingerprints like crazy, and it is also very slippery in the hand. So I know a shell is included with the purchase of your Moto Z, or you can purchase additional ones for like $15. Um, but the shell is only really protecting the back and reducing the camera hump and offering a nice style. But even with that shell on, it's still leaving the sides and the front exposed to damage from falls and drops. So I would definitely recommend a case with this device. And just keep in mind, this device has no headphone jack, no wireless charging as well. So if you're considering this as your next flagship device, keep in mind the device is already from five to $600 and that's just for the phone itself and if you're interested in the additional mods that is included the jbl speaker the power banks the projector that's going to cost more money on top of what you're already paying for your phone so just keep that in mind how much you want to spend on your next smartphone well that was my review of the moto z uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed it hopefully it was helpful if it was please hit that thumbs up button and if you're new to the channel please subscribe for more future videos this is paul tech and i'll talk to you on the next one bye